AO. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. South Australians were justifiably horrified when they heard of Anne-Marie Smith's cruel, tragic and unnecessary death in a cane chair that had become her bed and her toilet. Anne-Marie was failed by her carer, her NDIS provider, Integrity Care, and Anne-Marie was failed by the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission. Whistleblowers have contacted me to share what appears to be a hear no evil, see no evil management culture by the NDIS Quality Safeguards Commission in South Australia, the commission that is set up to ensure that people like Anne-Marie are protected. The following stories have been shared with me. A participant reported an alleged sexual assault by a new care worker. The participant had not complained before. The matter was never referred to the investigations team. It was archived and only came to light after the investigator reviewed the file in connection with a separate matter some months later. A participant died from the misuse of a strong sedative during what was a routine examination, but the matter was not pursued by the commission as the state director thought it was satisfied enough that the SAPOL investigation was enough. How can it be that a participant has died as a consequence of the misuse of chemical restraints in the care of an NDIS provider and the commission chose not to investigate? One outright sexual assault where the participant was photographed was not referred through to investigations and was dug up several months later by chance. Another notification that languished in the list was an alleged rape of an intellectual disabled participant by one or more care workers. The incident was not referred to the investigations team because the frontline reportable incident officer didn't think the incident was serious enough to warrant immediate action. It was four months before the allegation got to the investigations team. Four months. I'm told the delay in passing the cases to the investigation team is a common occurrence, and less than one per cent of reportable incidences make it to investigations. There are just a handful of workers employed to triage reportable in incidences. They are deluged, deluged with notifications, each having at least 600 open cases on any given day. The Commission is a passive receiver of information and complaints, with no risk assessment processes to identify high-risk providers or at-risk participants. Visitors to providers are superficial meet and greets by prior arrangement because the state director has decreed there shall be no unannounced visits. Staff are not provided with government vehicles and must either use taxis or walk to collect evidence or make a visit. Heaven help participants in the regions. Triaging delays mean it is often too late to interview a witness or any potential prosecution given the inability of witnesses to recall details after the passage of several months. Staff are leaving and not being replaced in a timely manner, and there are concerns of aspects of the investigative procedures at the Commission may not even meet the Australian Government investigative standards. Staff and former staff hold genuine concerns about the manner in which the Commission is carrying out its duties, and the concerns, when raised internally, are falling on deaf ears. I understand that the State Director actually expressed relief that the Commission had no idea that integrity care posed a risk to participants relieved that the office had no knowledge of the circumstances surrounding Ms Smith's care. Clearly a fundamental misunderstanding of the role of a regulatory body. The fact that integrity care wasn't on the Commission's radar should fill the State Director with dread, not relief. This cannot continue. The NDIA must undertake a risk assessment during planning phases and at-risk participants and their providers flagged with the Commission. State and federal governments must improve information sharing because the current bilateral agreement between South Australia and the federal government is clearly not working. Frontline staff must be trained and KPIs must put in place for immediate sharing of allegations of serious misconduct to investigators. The Commission must investigate every allegation of serious misconduct. SAPOL involvement is no excuse not to investigate. Unannounced visitors, un unannounced visits must happen across all of SA. All records must be immediately available for auditing, and there must be a thorough independent investigation into the management of the Commission of South Australia. I am shocked at what I have heard. I'd like to thank the whistleblowers for their courage, and now the federal government must act. Yeah. Yeah.